part 6 of the Imsant Lava Pass deals with the section from the 26th to the 32nd kilometer and includes the single width bridge crossing of the Imsant Lava River. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch the first five videos sequentially which contain the orientation animations as well as information on safety, tourism and history. As the road drops down towards the final hairpin bend preceding the river crossing, the legend of the Mamlambo river monster is just waiting to be told. Mamlambo is a cryptid that appears in South African and Zulu folklore known to natives as the brain sucker. This quasi-reptilian monstrosity terrorized the villages around the St. Lava River in South Africa and was notorious for dragging its victims into its murky depths where it would devour their faces in order to consume their brains. The animal has been described by eyewitnesses as being an astonishing 6 to 7 feet in length and other descriptions include a long tail, four stubby legs, a crocodilian torso, a serpentine neck and a horse-like head. It's even been suggested that the animal may be bioluminescent. An elder named Machunga claimed that it's a big snake and he has seen what it does with the head and neck of a snake and it shines at night with a green light. Witnesses have also claimed that the animal has two gleaming green eyes which according to native legend possess the power to mesmerize anyone unfortunate enough to make eye contact with the beast. According to legend, Mamlambo is notorious for dragging its victims into its watery domain where it proceeds to drown them. Once its prey has perished, the Mamlambo then cracks open the skull of its quarry and proceeds to siphon the brains and ultimately all of the blood from the corpse. During 1997, the legend became reality when seven villagers went missing along the river. When the bodies were retrieved from the river, Parts of the head, face and neck were mutilated. These reports appear to be so authentic that they were extensively reported in national newspapers as well as Johannesburg Star newspaper. All the publicity led to an international television crew arriving to film the Mamlambo in a program focusing on the paranormal. After a week they found no evidence whatsoever and returned back to base. Mamlambo sightings have been around for a long time, but local police state that the monster's purported victims were actually only drowning casualties resulting from the swelling of the St. Lava River during the heavy rains of the Lesotho wet season. Captain Mzuko of the Mount Aleph Police credited crabs for the disfiguring injuries discovered on most of the victims' corpses. He said, I have seen some of the bodies of the so-called monster's victims. They had all been in the water for some time and is often the case river crabs had eaten away the soft parts of the faces and throats. In one case the crabs were still clinging to the body when it was brought in. Despite the police's dismissal of native accounts, the villagers who resided near the ominous river claimed that they were not merely superstitious tribesmen but educated people that had been terrorized by this mysterious entity. The most recent sighting of what was described as a giant reptile was reported near Lubaleko, a village nestled on the St. Lava River in the vicinity of Mount Alef. This pass and vast tracts of land around it are a massive reserve of untapped tourism still waiting to be discovered. The Wild Coast, also known as the Transkei, is a 250 km long stretch of rugged and unspoiled coastline that stretches north of East London along sweeping bays, footprint-free beaches, lazy lagoons and rocky headlands. Originally encompassing the rural Transkei region only, today the Wild Coast includes the pretty seaside villages of the Jikaleza route that run south along the coastline between the Kai River and East London. The Transkei section of the Wild Coast is rural South Africa at its best and the roads to the coast lead the visitor through the Kwasa Heartland, a stunning landscape of rolling green hills dotted with thatched on darvels, offering interesting glimpses into a culture far removed from the stresses of modern life. Apart from Port St. John's and Coffee Bay, most villages north of the Kai River are made up of only a handful of fishermen cottages, the occasional backpacker hostel and the odd hotel. The region is blessed with fine weather during the winter months when the sardine run attracts a frenzy of activity. Be sure to watch part 7 and the final video in this series on the St. Lava Pass. Mm -hmm.